the 36 hour ordeal at mantralaya submerged in deluge it was 2:30 am on 2nd october 2009 mantralaya was engulfed in complete darkness power supply had failed in the heavy downpour and it was pitch dark everywhere at that silent hour when the entire town was asleep wailings started all of a sudden cries of anguish echoing from all around and the noise of people hurriedly climbing the staircases domineering the weirdness there the agonizing cry raised by the inoffensive quadrupeds and winged vertebrates of all kind to save themselves from the icy hands of death and the escape from the macabre surroundings reverberated from everywhere the kovilpatti devotees who had gone to sleep the previous night after participating in all the pujas and enjoying the sight of the water flowing near the manchaliyamma temple were woken up from their slumber by the sudden rush of people climbing the staircase they came out of their rooms fearing some untoward happening and when they looked around from the second floor of the lodge they were shocked at the sight of the onrush of water that had surrounded the entire township the flood was carrying with its force many heads of cattle that were struggling to keep themselves alive household things like furniture tv sets mixies etc and the miscellaneous items stored in various shops besides two wheelers and cars parked near the lodges that were being swept away in the ravages caused by the deluge it was a gruesome sight the like of which nobody had beheld earlier leaving everyone agape with fear and astonishment in such a grim situation none could do anything to prevent the loss arising out of those sinister happenings the local residents could only try to save their own life and of their family members but could do precious little to prevent the violent flow of the river devouring things that came in, in its way with hours ticking away the flood persisted and in the stream water had risen to the alarming level of almost submerging the jeeva brindavana of sri raghavendra swami the stream at the peak of the flood was surrounded by water on all sides the area in front of the brindavana complex and the one to its right presented the picture of the entire segment of that township floating in a sheet of water as it were it was only the portion to the left of the brindavana and surrounding sri venkatramana temple proximate to the river that remained isolated from the course of the tungabhadra in spate in the places engulfed by the flood none of the residents or visitors was left in the ground floor as everyone had to seek refuge at the top of the buildings in those areas sri swetindra tirtha the pitatibati of the mantralaya mat was in town at that time even his holiness and his disciples had to shift then from the ground floor to a safer height they had moved away the puja caskets including the most important moolarama icon to a secure place at considerable height when the water level was seen rising gradually in the brindavana complex sri swetindra as pontiff had taken up the management of the shrimant just about 5 months earlier after sri sushmindra tirtha had attained mukti meditating upon sri raghavendra he prayed for divine intervention to get over the unprecedented crisis that had struck mantralaya mantralaya mat administration had planned to do the brindavana pratishthapana of sri sushmindra tirtha in the shastrik way in the next 4 days exhum exhuming the mortal remains from its confines and consecrating it in a sepulcher and had done elaborate arrangements for its observance the event was to take place on 6 10 2009 and the shrimat had made advance preparations to accommodate and feed about 2 to 3 lakh devotees expected to participate in the affair 
Indeed, it would have been a horrible tale of devastation, with tens of thousands of lives lost in a watery grave if the deluge had occurred a few days later, on the 5th or 6th October. Besides, the influx of devo devotees being less on 2nd October 2009 because of the heavy rains experienced on the preceding three days, the moderate number present there at that time could climb to the open terraces of buildings and protect themselves from the rage of the Tungabhadra. Even as Mantralaya was in such turmoil, the Mumbai Mail we were travelling by was running its normal course towards Mantralaya. I could not know then whether the group bound for Mantralaya from Ahobilam had halted at Anu Mantralaya or had gone to Mantralaya and was caught in the havoc there. The group from Coimbatore that had taken shelter for the night in a van at Adoni found out that a train that had come to Adoni at 4.30 a.m. had not departed towards Mantralayam Road Station, even after two and a half hours halt there. The group members were in utter perplexity, not knowing what they should do next. When I got in touch with them telephonically, Sri H. Nagaraj told me, it's not possible to go beyond Adoni, even by road. The train, which is on the platform here, is likely to get back towards Guntakal. We are planning to reach Guntakal. It is not known whether your train will travel beyond Guntakal to reach Adoni. To know about the fate of Sri Satya of Ayanavaram, Matt, who had gone to Mantralaya in advance, Sri Mogan Rao contacted him and was told that he was on the terrace of Hare Srinivasa Lodge and that the flood level was then touching the foot of the tower of the Mantralaya Garbhagraha, that the shops at the ground level appeared to be floating as it were in the deluge, and there being no power supply from the night, his cell phone battery could not be charged and was running down, but that he was somehow taking a few important pictures at that time. The pictures recorded by Satya Satyapriyan in his cell camera from a vantage point near the Moola Brindavana, when viewed by me later, were really breathtaking and frightening. Since he was a photographer, he had taken those shots in a realistic manner. The Mantralaya Pontiff and the Mutt management had asked Sri A.M. Rajagopalan, A.M.R., to write about the flood in Kumudam Jyotitam. And when Tambi Raghavendra told me this information, I suggested to Yema that the publication of the pictures taken by Sri Satya along with this Sri Yema's article would be more informative to the readers. Accordingly, Sri Yema got those published under the caption Tannirilum Kannirilum Mantralayam Mantralaya in Deluge and Tears in a separate write-up. Kovilpati Shanti's group also had taken some pictures and videoed the devastation from a place near the Srimat, covering the frontage of the Mutt, the Guru Sarvabhauma Vidya Pita, and the state of the main road and the adjoining portions. The video scenes of cars being swept away in the flood and the agonizing cries of those struggling to save themselves were truly heart-rending. The pictures and video images taken by Sri Raghottaman, who accompanies me to Navabrindavana every year during Sri Vyasaraja Aradhana, were truly awesome to look at. In the room where he had stayed and outside it, snakes were floating and swimming in the waters, and it left me wondering how he had taken those pictures so daringly and in a realistic manner. The vehicles parked on the road being swept away in the inundation was distinctly recorded in the video images taken by him. Thus, the various pictures, video images taken by Kovilpati Shanti, Ainavaram Satya and Korutu Ragotaman as also those taken from near Sri Venkata Chirbati temple and the ones put up on the internet by the Matt authorities when viewed gave me the impression of my watching those scenes in reality and at those spots. Apart from those pictures, 
the write-ups sent by many of my readers who had been caught in those untoward happenings revealed the goriness of the events. Our train was passing the Gooty station and there was no rain at all in those areas. While so, it was rather incredible that Mantralaya, which is just two hours journey from there, should have been reduced to ruins at that time by the unexpected tsunami-like deluge. At, at 8.30 a.m., the train steamed into Guntakal station. The Coimbatore group was sighted on the platform and I was perturbed at having to meet the team members there rather than at Mantralaya where we had planned to, in an ambience of absolute devotion. There was soon an announcement on the platform that our train would be taking a different route to Mumbai and passengers bound for the stations along the Raichur route should detrain at Guntakal itself. We then got down from our compartment with all our luggages, nearly 60 of us, not knowing what should be done next and how we should be returning to Chennai. I was walking along the platform bewildered, unable to decide about the next course of action. If our yatra had materialized as per the original plan, we should have come to Chippagiri, 10 kilometers from Guntakal to have darshan of Sri Vijayadas Rakate on 5th October 2009. And when I was lamenting about the unfortunate happening, it occurred to me that it was best to go for Chippagiri's darshan at that time. And so I explained our position telephonically to Sri Jagannath Dasa of that place. The latter arranged for a bus from there and our group reached Chippagiri travelling by that bus. Subsequently, I got in touch with Sri uh, Pattada Ramachar of Sri Appanachar's lineage and uh, asked him how Bhikshalaya was. He responded saying, flood water has entered the village. The holy spots in Bhiksh Bhikshalaya are completely submerged in water. Most of the houses in the village have collapsed and people have moved away to safe retreats. It was 10 a.m. Mantralaya was having incessant rains and the flood was unrelenting. The Kovilpati devotees indulged in group prayer for divine help. There was water all around, but ironically, no drinking water was at hand. And so too, not a morsel of food to satisfy one's hunger. By 1 p.m., the rain had stopped completely. A helicopter at that time was circling in the sky and those on the ground felt jubilant that water sachets and food packets would be dropped. But it turned out to be a vain hope as it soon veered away from their range. It came again twice to take the pontiff and his disciples and some important staff members of the Srimad to Raichur along with the caskets containing the Mularama idol and other vigrahas, puja materials for the conduct of the Samstana puja of the mat uninterruptedly. Thus, the Mularama puja took place that day without break at Rai, uh, Raichur, though Mantralaya at that time was in the grip of an unprecedented deluge. The la letter recounting the experiences of the Kovilpati devotees received by me later ran somewhat on these lines. As soon as the helicopter was sighted, those who were on the terraces of buildings raised cries en masse, signaling for help, which typified their agonies arising out of thirst, hunger and fear of death, the mental picture of which causes haripilations even today. Alas, our hopes were belied then. But after 6 p.m., about 10 local youths braving the swirling waters swam against it and brought with them a bag of rice to the terrace of the building where we had taken refuge. With bricks, they contrived a makeshift oven and with the available materials lit a fire and boiled the rice there. The rice cooked, uh, cooked thus and uh, distributed to all of us tasted ambrosial in those circumstances. When I read the account of those horrible experiences, I reflected spontaneously 
Guru Raja, when you were Venkatanatha, you had suffered extreme hunger in abject poverty. In your very presence in Mantralaya, you have now caused your devotees to go through such hardship. Maybe you have orchestrated such misery for them only to make them understand that such adversity is part and parcel of mundane life and cannot be avoided. The Kovilpati group had planned to catch a train in the midnight of um, 2nd October 2009 to return home. The members who had missed the Navabrindavana trip under dire circumstances were now unsure of their train coming to Mantralayam Road Station. In the darkness of that hour, they lighted in their lodge all the lamps they had kept ready for lighting at Navabrindavana. With the prayer that the deities and gurus at Navabrindavana should accept those as their humble seva in those unforeseen circumstances. Later, as the rail services in that route had been suspended, they could not leave Mantralaya at that time. The flood that started subsiding in the evening drained off completely by the morning of 3rd October 2009, Saturday. But the entire town had become slushy, feet going deep inside the silt, like in a quagmire. The inundation had caused the Mool Brindavana getting coated with mud and alluvium, and in the Prakara too there was sludge all around. After the flood in the river had run its course, a look at the devastation caused by it in Mantralaya would have brought tears in the eyes of even the strong will. Such was the havoc caused by a Tungabhadra in fury. The shops lined along the bank of the river and the ones in front of the Srimat, including Shashikans, had all been swept away, with no traces at all of their having existed earlier in those places. There was a big Goshala, cattle shed, in Mantralaya. Hundreds of cows tethered there perished in the flood without being able to free themselves from their fetters. A bridge across the Tungabhadra river on the Raichu road en route to Bikshalaya had been reduced to shambles by the violent flow of the river. The pictures of human corpses lying along the course of the river published in the Dinatantu paper as also the report on the tragic events caused utmost grief and pain in my heart. The ever busy Mantralaya with swarms of devotees in the shops, roads and the Brindavana complex as also at the river bank presented a bizarre picture in the post-deluge scenario, devoid of the hustle and bustle it was known for. Even before the Mantralaya residents could heave a sigh of relief at the restoration of normalcy, there was another shocking news awaiting them. A rumour was fast spreading around the town that the Tungabhadra dam was going to be thrown open and in another three hours the Mantralaya would again be under inundation. The locals therefore started evacuating the place with their belongings while some among them sought refuge at a higher altitude. The devotees who had come from outside, young and old alike, started treading fast in those slushy surroundings, the fear in their hearts governing their actions in those alarming conditions. They were lamenting whether their 36-hour ordeal was not enough and more was in store for them, forcing them to hasten their movement towards a safer zone. Poor victims, poor victims had to trek not a short distance in those difficult conditions and ominous circumstances, but cover as much as 7 to 8 kilometers to reach a haven of safety. Their hearts throbbing with fear of death that was following them like nemesis, but fortunately for them, the forewarning of another flood to follow turned out to be a mere rumor floating amongst the panicky residents and the outsiders then present at Mantralaya. Our group, visiting Chippagiri then, had Tita Prasad in Sri Vijayadasra Sannidana there and later, travelling by a special bus arranged from Guntakal 
reached Chennai via Tirupati on 3rd October 2009. We consoled ourselves that whatever had happened was by the will of the Almighty that was beyond our comprehension. But my mind was always questing about why such a horrible thing had taken place, eager to find the reason behind it. After the tragic event, several truckloads of relief materials were rushed to Mantralaya and the AP government and Karnataka government made announcement of monetary assistance of crores of rupees for rehabilitation of that pilgrim center. Devotees in large number came forward to extend their physical assistance to the flood affected populace and financial help from abroad as also from all corners of India flowed into Mantralaya. On account of these, Mantralaya limped back to normalcy in about four or five months. But the matter cannot be just left at that stage as several questions crop up about the catastrophe. Why has, why has the Tungabhadra that had given way for Sri Appanaja caused the Moola Brindavana itself to be submerged in deluge? Why has not Sri Raghavendra prevented this calamity when he is able to rush to the help of his devotees continents apart and extend his grace to them, particularly when devastation of such a large magnitude was taking place right in front of him at the spot he is sitting at. Such doubts may arise not only among the devotees but even in the perception of the general public and these definitely call for an in-depth analysis of the matter. But we have to see before that what trouble water one of the Panchabhutas had created for Sri Vijayendra Tirtha, the Paramaguru of Sri Raghavendra. And in another incident to an earlier avatara of Sri Madhvacharya, the earliest preceptor of Sri Raghavendra in that monastic order. First, let us turn our attention to the episode concerning Sri Vijayendra. How that spiritually exalted personage, adept in all the 64 arts, had successfully fought against the potence of water. <laughs> 